What is up, ladies and gentle nerds? It's your boy Graham, also known as HamHawks42 on the internet, and today we are looking at another random magic card. Today, actually, we're looking at Descent into Madness. This is another user request. Um, this is actually coming from... Uh, actually, there are a couple of different screen names for this gentleman. So Triton DK, thank you, Triton, for putting this one out. It is Descent into Madness. It is an enchantment for three black black. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a despair counter on Descent into Madness. Just despair counters alone. That's freaking awesome. I love that name. Okay, so what does it do? Then each player exiles X permanents he or she controls and or cards from his or her hand where X is the number of despair counters on Descent into Madness. All right, that's interesting. So you have to exile permanents and or. So basically you have to remove enough stuff to satisfy Descent into Madness. But... It's each player, so you have to do this too. So it's crazy, and I, lo I also love the um, the artwork. It's showing a group of potentially what look like adventurers um, running away from like a running up a crumbling flight of stairs, which is very fitting and looks very much like something out of a uh, if like if an Indiana Jones film was written by H.P. Lovecraft, you would get this moment. Um, and it says the stairs lead down in both directions. Ooh, that is a chilling piece of flavor text. But how would we use this in a game? Now, it's attrition is what you what you're doing. You're ultimately trying to sap your opponent of their resources. But the problem is you are running the risk of sapping yourself of resources as well. So we have to balance that somehow. You have to navigate that and there are a couple of different ways to do it the biggest one that i can think of is finding ways to create tokens on your turn um try to create re tokens repeatedly is probably your best bet um that that's really what it comes down to it's also at the beginning of oh and so at the beginning of your you put a despair counter on descent into madness each player exiles expert oh so it only happens on your upkeep Hmm. So I can think of a couple of different things here. One thing, um, there's no clause on here. I'm just going to go ahead and double check, make sure. There's nothing on here about if you can't satisfy the requirement. So cards like, um, cards that phase. So cards that are off the battlefield for a time could be really useful. Um, cards like Eerie Interlude, Ghost Way, that... Um, remove all your creatures from the battlefield for a little bit. Those kinds of... Uh, removes all your creatures from the battlefield until end of turn. Now, that doesn't exactly work because... Um, hmm. There are two different ways you can go with this. One is build a deck that can function with very, very few for permanents. So you can build like a burn-style deck that the whole goal is to just deal as much damage as humanly possible coming out of your hand. Um, or a combo that you can play out of your hand on a single turn. That, I think, is where this card shines. So Descent into Madness, it's this is the predecessor to Doom Foretold. And to be honest, I think 90% of the time I would rather play Doom Foretold because it's easier to control. Descent into Madness gets very, very big, very, very fast because it's ramping up every single turn. You are increasing the number of despair counters on this thing every single turn. And so as a result, the more stuff is going to have to get discarded or destroyed every single turn. Oof. So to be honest, and, and then actually the, the biggest challenge with this is once Descent into Madness is your only permanent, you have to sacrifice it to satisfy its effect. So that's an issue. I just realized it. I, I believe I just cracked the code. Tamio, Collector of Tales. Oh, dang it! Spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to discard cards or sacrifice permanents. It, the, your opponent has to control them. Um, so, so what you do is this is gonna get weird just go with me here so you run descent into madness you run descent into madness and then you donate it to your opponent somehow using some effect like a zedru the great hearted or something like that where you you're able to give the player the permanent therefore your opponent now owns descent into madness on their turn 
all players, they, they put a despair counter on it, and then all players have to sacrifice permanence. Well, because you no longer control Descent into Madness, you are no longer the owner of Descent into Madness, your opponent now, or you are the owner, but your opponent controls Descent into Madness. Therefore, that requirement to sacrifice is a requirement that your opponents control, and you then no longer have to worry about it. Now, to pull this off, you've got to, like, your jank levels have to just be off the charts, um... To, to actually execute on this, but I want to. I want to see somebody pull this off. Like, I think you'd have to be in five colors to really pull it off correctly, um, but that's okay. Do it. Make it happen. Actually, running this in, like, a salt high setup where you got Tamiyo Collector of Tales, I'm trying to think of w ways of donating an enchantment in these colors. I believe... Um, I know there are cards like Switcheroo that would let you switch creatures. Um, and then there are also cards that can animate the enchantment. So you could do something like that. Um, I believe there are also cards... I think actually there, there might be a card called Donate, if I remember correctly, where you give a permanent to another player. So if you could do that, if you can execute that hand hand over Descent into Madness to one of your opponents and have Tammy on board, then all of a sudden everybody else has to sacrifice permanence and potentially a lot of them. And if you really want to crank up the dial, you could also add Proliferate to the mix. Um, although the problem with that is the moment the, the your opponent controls Descent into Madness, they can just sacrifice it to itself. So you'd only get one turn with it. Mm. So that's problematic. Um, so I guess the other thing to do is look at creating a ton of permanence. And the, the one thing that comes to mind right, right f off the top for that is um, goblins. Um, Krenko. Krenko Tin Street Kingpin as well as T Krenko Mob Boss can both create an obscene number of 1-1 goblin tokens. And if you can create an obscene number of 1-1 goblin tokens, having to sacrifice 2, 3, 5 of them isn't that big of a deal because you have a ton of them and you're creating a ton more. You can also do, I know there are a number of white cards that um, go wide very easily and produce a lot of tokens that way. So that's what I would look to. That's how I would leverage Descent into Madness. I would try to create the biggest board state you, through tokens as humanly possible. Now, the one downside to that is a Wrath of God will wreck your day completely. Um, you know, one Wrath of God wiping the whole board and then all of a sudden you're sacrificing your lands like all your friends are. And then nobody's having fun. So that's a real problem. That's a real issue. So board wipes, you, you would be opening yourself up to board wipes really, really badly. You win some, you lose some. You get, you know, the, every every deck is going to have a weak spot, so that could be it. Now, some kind of situation where you have a ton of tokens and a, or actually um, mana ramp is another thing. What if you just ramp out an obscene number of lands? Um, because that's the thing, descent into madness. You exile permanence. It doesn't say non-land permanence, so you do have to sacrifice your lands to it. So once it gets going. If you're in a ramp deck, so like if you have a salt high ramp deck where you are capable of just pulling out a crazy number of uh, of lands, that's it. Landfall strategies, there are also a number of landfall strategies like, um, what is it, Rumbling Baloth, where you produce tokens based on lands coming, onto the play, coming into play. Um, so if you can create tokens for lands coming into play, or if you can use something like Smothering Tide to be... Um, creating treasure tokens and you also have cards like land tax that can produce you know, get a bunch of lands into your hands so you can just discard them also madness the name descent into madness is a clue you can discard to satisfy this you don't have to be sacrificing permanence so if you have cards with madness the the effect madness where when you discard a card you get to do something fun with it um where you can discard a card to cast it effectively if your deck is descent into madness and nothing but madness cards especially if you have madness cards that can draw you cards that's going to be money the what you can do there so every player has to sacrifice permanence and discard cards and then as you're discarding cards you're getting value out of it not to mention everybody's going to be discarding cards to this so something like tiny bones could be really really nasty although it only happens on one turn so tiny bones doesn't exactly fit but your opponents are going to be hellbent so tiny bones actually could be your finisher pretty comfortably in that deck yeah this is interesting so madness or cards that give your cards madness so the cards where when you discard you can trigger stuff i would definitely lean into that i would find cards that allow you to get value upon discarding a card um 
And actually, Rael, the Everwise, is another one where you can discard cards to this and then draw cards equal to whatever you discarded. And so that's a way to restock yourself. Now, in order to do that, you have to be in Grixis colors, which... I'm totally cool with that. Grixis is a wonderful color combination. You can do some incredibly fun stuff with it. So all in all, Descent into Madness is weird. It's very weird, but there are ways around it and there are fun things you can do with it. And for that, I, I like, dude, Triton, thank you for suggesting this. I salute you. I think this card has something. It's there. Is it good? Eh, that's debatable. But I like it. I like it a lot. So thank you for sharing. And this has been uh, this has been fun on this edition of Overthinking MTG. If you enjoy this type of conversation, please hop out into our Discord. There's a link in the description below. Or catch me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash hamhocks42. I'm over there most days of the week uh, talking smart. And I can also, I'd be more than happy to discuss your favorite card of choice. So thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. And remember, until next time. Well, and after next time, but I'm going to remind you again next time, you are a good person and you deserve to be happy.